how soon could a COVID vaccine be approved for use? The UK's approval of the Pfizer vaccine has ramped up pressure on the federal government to provide an answer. Around 50 hospitals are on standby and vaccination centres in venues such as conference centres or sports stadiums are being set up now. This is with regard to a vaccine that's being, a COVID vaccine that's being released to the public tomorrow. I wish we could say that here in Canada. Instead, we have to congratulate our friends in the United Kingdom for getting their act together. So the question is this, when will the Prime Minister give that exact same information to Canadians? Right now, as we speak, Health Canada is looking at four different vaccine candidates, uh, candidates that are leading around the world and that we have signed for tens of millions of doses for. Canadians will be covered on vaccines. For more on where things stand with vaccine approvals in this country, I'm joined by Supriya Sharma, Chief Medical Advisor at Health Canada. She's in Ottawa. Hi, Dr. Sharma. Great to have you back on the program. Good to be here. I just wanted to start off by asking you to, if you could qualify that the health, what the health minister tweeted out today around in response to or related to what's happened out of the UK with the approval of the first vaccine candidate there. Uh, she said that Health Canada was uh, nearing completion of its own review and that the uh, review is expected to conclude soon. Uh, what does soon mean? So just to be just to clarify, in terms of the UK authorization, um, it's not the authorization of the overall vaccine. It's actually a, a temporary authorization of one lot that's destined for the United Kingdom. Whereas the review that we're doing is really looking at the overall vaccine authorization here for Canada. And as, as the minister said, it's been going very well. We had initially got the submission back in uh, October, on October 9th. And then since October 9th, we've been getting additional information in. Um, that's all been going very well. We're expecting to get some more additional information in the next few days. And then based on that, we'll be able to provide a bit more uh, precision on exactly when we'll do the authorization. But it's, um, it's progressing very well. And we're expecting that to happen quite soon. So I believe my colleague Catherine Cullen spoke to you last week, and, and you had said that uh, you were still anticipating more data at that point, and then might be able to have a clearer idea of a timeline for a decision. Is that the same data that you're still waiting for now? So it's different data. So basically right now what we have is that, um, you know, we, we've talked about what goes into a submission. So there's the preclinical information, um, all that animal data and the laboratory data. There's all the clinical information from the clinical trials. And then there's all the information about the manufacturing of the vaccine. So when we get uh, closer to the end of the review, really the clinical data has been looked at. And it's really now looking at the specific manufacturing details, information on what lots we might be getting here in Canada and it's always really important to make sure that all the quality assurance is done on that lot, um, making sure we've got all the information summarized into the labeling and the information that's used um, for people when they're administering the vaccine. So it's really those final phases that we're going through now. So we've got, uh, you know, the clinical information is pretty much in and now it's just the last bits on the manufacturing and, and on the labeling that we're finalizing now. There was some speculation that that approval could come somewhere around the middle of December. Is that still the case? You know, we're on track for a similar sort of timeline. I think what we've said is that it's been going well. We're expected to make decisions based on uh, the data in line with other regulators as well. I think we're going to see a lot of regulators around this time frame because we're all basically around the same stage in the review. So, so uh, yes, in the, in the next, in the next uh, while. What about the other three candidates that, uh, as of yesterday, I think it was, there's a fourth candidate, so there's th three others beyond this one that Health Canada is considering. Do you expect, uh, do, do you have as clear an idea, I guess I should say, about the timeline for those? Well, the further you get away from the end of the review, the, the less sort of precision that we have, because obviously there's more data that we need to, to look at. So we are the next one in line um, in terms of the amount of data that we have already in is really the Moderna vaccine. And so we're hoping uh, over the next month or so that we will have that finalized. And then for the others, really, um, we're, we're still waiting for a considerable amount of data to come in. So it's a bit more difficult to predict. Um, so the other two that we uh, have under review is the AstraZeneca vaccine and as well we've just received the one from Johnson and Johnson from Janssen. 
Okay, and then the second question I think a lot of Canadians have is, this is very helpful in the review process, what happens, I mean, we've heard, for example, in the United States, once they are approved, once one is approved, it's about 48 hours before it starts to begin to be distributed. Uh, how soon after, let's say, that anticipated approval happens, and I'm not saying it's a certainty by any stretch of the imagination, but say it does in the next few weeks, how soon after that might those vaccines be on Canadian soil? All of that is happening at the same time. So we've got the review process. You know, we've always said that no vaccine will get into uh, into the distribution chain. It'll, no vaccine will be delivered until it's got that health candidate authorization. Of course, that's all that will be the case. And there are active discussions with the companies about what supplies and which lots and which batches will be coming to Canada. Um, certainly, from the, the the contract perspective, we're expecting submissions um, uh, sort of supply to come in and. In January. We're working very closely with the provinces and territories to make sure that they're ready to receive it. So I think the bottom line is that when there is vaccine that is destined for Canada that's ready to be shipped, we will be ready to receive it and ready to, to distribute it. So we're looking at January. If uh, we get supply that comes in uh, earlier, certainly we'll be prepared to do to, to distribute that uh, as well. Yeah, I was going to ask if, if there is there a chance that if there is, let's say, by the 15th of December, that approval that the vaccine could arrive prior to January, as we've seen uh, might be the case in other jurisdictions? And it, well, that's exactly kind of the information that we're looking for right now. So, for example, when we're looking at the information around manufacturing and the lots that are destined for, for Canada, part of that is obviously knowing which vaccines we'll be getting and uh, making sure that they're, that they're appropriately uh, assessed. We've got the quality assurance. So if they are ready and they are ready to be shipped, then we will be ready to receive them. Are we at any kind of disadvantage if regulators in other country, uh, other countries rather, like what we've seen, and I, and I take your point that it's not exactly the same type of approval, but if that happens in the UK and then in the US prior to us, like is there, uh, is there a lot that's destined to us, destined for us no matter what, or, or do we perhaps lose out on some of the lot to countries that approve it m quicker than us? So, you know, that's the whole idea of having the, the contracting um, process in place. We we put these contracts in place for the, the, the sole purpose of making sure that we have Canadian supply. And so, you know, we've, we've written into that that it's contingent on the uh, Health Canada authorization, but the timing of that doesn't make, doesn't make a difference. So we've got our place in line. You know, we've got the commitment from companies that we do have supply that will be allotted to us. And it's just a matter of making sure that we're very confident in the data that we're seeing. Um, you know, of course, Canadians are, are relying on us to make sure that we're doing our due diligence. We're looking at all of the safety effectiveness and the quality information, making sure that the benefits outweigh the risks. And we will not make that final decision until we have all the information. We can be assured of all of that for the vaccines that Canadians will receive. And, and just finally, if that is the case, and, and as we've been discussing, that one candidate is approved, uh, when you talk about distribution and sort of the provinces being or, or you're being ready to go, does it go straight? I'm just curious, like, is it the military that distributes it to the, the provinces? Uh, who, who will be doing that? So that really depends on the vaccine and um, the terms of, uh, of the contracts as well. So depending on the company, they've uh, indicated whether or not they'll be doing some of that shipping, whether or not uh, we'll go and pick up the vaccine in certain locations. So it really does depend For the on Pfizer the vaccine. one, I guess, more specifically, since that's the more, more imminent one. Right, so the Pfizer vaccine, uh, we're expected to get the shipments into Canada and then all the work that we've been doing already with the provinces and ta uh, territories. We've got Major General Denis Fortin that will be coordinating that distribution as well. So we've already had those discussions about um, being prepared, making sure we have you know the refrigerators and the cold storage um, to make sure that people are prepared to receive the vaccine. So all of that, all of those conversations are continuing and progressing really well. Okay, Dr. Sharma, I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for your interest. Take care. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.